Hello everyone, we are doing this physics paper today. This is May June 2021, 9702, paper 1 1. The threshold of the paper was like this. I'm going to attach this in the description. A was at 27, B was at 24, C was at 21, D was at 18, and E was at 15. Okay? Um, so let's begin. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. So starting with question number one, what is a reasonable estimate of the volume of an adult person? Okay, so you can do this in two ways. You can think of the person as a rectangular prism, or you can think of the person as a cylinder. So uh, what's the typical height of a person? Around uh, five, six, five feet, six inches, right? So it's like um, 160 centimeters, maybe. The height is around 160 centimeters average and what about um, you know if we think of our torso wh what's the length right it's kind of like 30 centimeters maybe around 30 25 30 so this is 30 centimeters right so what if we do this <laughs> um if we find out the volume here it's 30 into 30 into 160 so 30 square into 160 that's into 10 to the power minus 6 that's actually 0 0.144 meter cube okay so what about a cylinder uh, since this value is 30 the radius is going to be 15 right so volume is equal to pi r square h or pi into 15 square into height so 15 square into pi into height of 160 that gives us a value of into 10 to the power minus 6 that's like 0 0.113 meter cube. So clearly our uh, reasonable estimate is A. Which combination of units could be used for expressing the power dissipated in a resistor? So power has a unit of watts, right? So power is uh, work done by time or joules per second, right? So let's match this. Work done is basically, work done is basically force into distance or it's Newton meters, right? So uh, power is actually Newton meter per second. So let's look for that and We're getting our answer 2 is D now 3 a force of 10 Newton and a force of 5 Newton act on an object so The angle between the forces is 150 degrees the resultant force on the object can be resolved into a pair of Perpendicular components which shows numerical expressions for the possible pair of perpendicular components. So This is how you do it. I'm gonna draw a line through this. This is 90 degree so this angle must be 150 minus 90, which is 60 degrees, okay? Oh, but they want the answer in terms of 30 degrees, right? So let's do this. Uh, since that angle is 150, 180 minus 150 is 30 degrees, okay? So the vertical component, only this 10 Newton force has a vertical component. The vertical component is 10 sine 30, okay? The vertical component is 10 sine 30 and the horizontal component is actually, you know, 10 cos 30, which is uh, 8.66. This is 10 cos 30. So the horizontal component is 10 cos 30 minus 5. This is the horizontal component and the vertical component is 10 sine 30. So this is, these are what we're looking for actually, okay? So 10 cos 30 minus 5 and... Sine 30. Which row shows numerical expressions for a possible pair of perpendicular components? Okay. So 10 cos 30 minus 5. That looks good. Ten cos thirty minus five, but uh, the this one is wrong. This is fine as the horizontal component, but this should have been ten sine thirty. Then ten sine thirty minus five. This doesn't make sense. Okay, these are wrong. So it's not A or B. Let's look at C. Ten minus five cos thirty. Okay, so this is how they. Uh, view the diagram then 
since a and b are wrong that means we were thinking about it in a wrong way okay so i was showing you one manner there's another way you can think of this look at this we know that this is 30 degrees according to geometry vertical opposite angles this is also 30 degrees okay so this is our axis now this one <laughs> this is our axis like this now you can think of it this way so we can say that One of the components is, you know, 10 in this direction and this component is 5 cos 30. What about the component that's above in this direction? This one is 5 sin 30, right? So for one of them in this direction, it's actually 10 minus 5 cos 30. And the other one is just 5 sin 30 according to this blue direction, okay? according to the blue direction and according to the green direction it's 10 minus 5 cos 30 and since the angle is 90 degree between these two forces they don't affect each other so our correct answer is in fact c 3 is c okay moving on a signal of frequency 25 hertz is displayed on the screen of a cro what is the time base okay so two boxes Frequency is 25 Hertz, so the time period is 1 by 25, that's 0 0.04 seconds. So each box must be 0 0.02 seconds, right? Because it's divided by 2, so each box is basically 0 0.02 seconds. Let's look for that. It's in milliseconds, so let's multiply it by 10 to the power 3, that gives us a value of 20 milliseconds okay so the answer should be b <laughs> five a micrometer screw gauge is used to measure the diameter of a wire the reading on the micrometer with the jaws closed is 0 0.05 so there was a negative zero error we need to add this later on the reading with the wire in position between the two jaws is <laughs> this okay so let's find out the actual diameter the diameter is going to be uh, since it's a negative zero error, we need to add it up 1.03 plus 0 0.05 that's 1.08 that is our actual diameter okay it's not 0.98 now what about the uncertainty so the thing about uncertainty is since there's already an uncertainty in the reading with the jaws closed and there's an uncertainty with this and since we added these two up when you add or subtract two things you need to add up the absolute uncertainty so the absolute uncertainty is going to be 0.02 plus 0 0.02 which is 0 0.04 so the correct answer should be d 5d <laughs> a projector is launched at an angle to the horizontal at time zero it travels over horizontal ground as shown a resistance is negligible which a graph best shows the variation with time with t of the speed of the projectile from when it is launched to when it lands on the ground so they're just talking about speed it has both horizontal and vertical component so we know that at this point at the max height you know uh, even the vertical velocity is zero there is still some horizontal velocity so b is wrong and d is also wrong because they're showing that speed is zero but speed does not remain constant all the time that's also wrong speed decreases a bit why because we lose horizontal velocity but then we accelerate downwards again that's why c is the best answer at maximum height you do not have vertical velocity but you still have horizontal velocity so that's the logic behind this six is c okay now seven a train initiated at rest at a station has a uniform acceleration of 0.2 meters per second until it reaches a speed of 20 it travels for a time at this constant speed and then has uniform deceleration okay the best way to do this is to draw a diagram so this whole thing is 3000 meters the area of the trapezium basically okay 
so what is the time taken by the train to travel between the two stations? <laughs> Alright, so we can actually find out this time initially, how V is equal to U plus A T. So, you know, 20 is equal to 0 plus 0 0.02 T. Zero point two, I mean, that's hundred seconds. So we took hundred seconds to reach here. Then we maintain the constant speed of twenty for some time, and then we decelerate at this rate. Okay, so again, v is equal to u plus at. Zero is equal to zero point four zero minus. <laughs> wait, our initial speed was twenty minus zero point forty. So time is equal to twenty by point four, which is fifty seconds. So this period is actually 50 seconds. This one is 100 and this one is actually 50 seconds. So the distance between two stations is 3000. Okay, so can't we divide it into three sections? Triangle, rectangle, triangle. So why don't we do this? Half into 100 into 20 plus 20 into the time taken for this period plus half into 15 to 20, there you have the third say a third section, right, is equal to 3000. So, let's do it. 1000 plus 20t plus 500 is equal to 3000. So, I'm getting a value of t is equal to 75, okay? So, 75 so 75 is the time taken to travel the mid section now they actually want you to figure out the time taken to travel between the two stations so you need to add all of these up right so it's actually 100 plus 75 plus 50 right so 100 plus 75 plus 50 that gives us a value of 225 so the closest answer is actually C 237 is C all right now for eight a rocket is fired from earth into space uh, Newton's third law of motion describe how forces act in pairs one of the forces of a pair is the weight of the rocket what is the other force of this pair okay so hear me out the rocket is going up, right? Now, they're telling us that the weight of the rocket, what is the origin of weight? The planet below is actually pulling the rocket towards it, right? When weight is a gravitational force, according to Newton's third law, pair forces must be of the same type. So what's the pair force? The rocket will also be pulling the earth and it is also a gravitational force, okay? So remember that this is a trick question. The answer should be D. They must be of the same type. Since the Earth is pulling the rocket, the rockets must also pull the Earth, okay? Nine, the graph shows how quantity P varies with quantity Q for a body falling, vertic uh, falling vertical downwards in a uniform gravitational field with air resistance. Which pair of quantities could be represented by P and Q? <laughs> okay. So, acceleration and force of air resistance it shows us that as we increase force acceleration decreases so that can't be logical and remember since we're falling vertically downwards in a uniform gravitation field with air resistance oh okay so in this question they're telling us that a body is falling vertically downwards okay in a uniform gravitational field with air resistance. So initially at time zero, remember, air resistance is zero, but you have maximum force of weight. As you go down, what happens? Air resistance increases, but weight remains constant. And at the end of the journey, what happens? Air resistance becomes equal to weight and net force becomes zero. So if you think about it that way, if the y-axis is acceleration and this is the force of air resistance, Air resistance is zero initially, that's true, when we have maximum acceleration, acceleration of free fall 9.1.
Now, as we proceed, you know, as force of air resistance increases, at one point when force of air resistance becomes equal to the weight of the object, acceleration does become zero. So actually A is correct, A is the answer 10. Which quantities are conserved in an inelastic collision? Okay, so you remember that kinetic energy is not conserved in an inelastic collision, but total energy and linear momentum are conserved. So 10 is C. A charge oil drop is a uh, held station between two charge plates. So you guys need to understand that this is from electric fields, right? This isn't in our content, but I can still teach you. Weight acts downwards, and since it's charged, uh, obviously electric force will act upwards. So it's feeling both, okay? Which pair of forces from the couple with a torque of 30? So torque is net moment. So for this one, it's 30 into 2, which is 60, wrong. These aren't couples, okay? They aren't of the same magnitude. What about this? This is 15 into 2, which is 30. So, this is correct. Okay? <laughs> 12 is D. 13. A uniform rigid bar exit with negligible mass is 1.20 meters long. <laughs> the bar is pivoted at point P. Three coplanar forces act on the bar as shown. Forces of 60 and 20 act perpendicularly to the bar at point X and Y respectively. Force F X at point Z at an angle of 30 degrees to the axis of the bar. The distances along the bar of the pivot and of the forces are shown. The bar experiences the resultant moment of uh, about P of 6 Newton meter in a clockwise direction, okay? So if you think about this component, you have to take F sine 30, okay? And this is your pivot, okay? So what are the clockwise moments? This one and this one. So we can say that 16 into 0 0.30 plus F sine 30 into, from the pivot, it's 0 0.90, right? Minus the anticlockwise moment of 20, minus 20 into 0 0.30 is actually equal to 6. So let's solve this. 16 into 0.3, 4.8 plus, sine 30 is half, right? 0 0.9 into 0 0.5 is 0 0.45. 0 0.45 F minus 20 into 0.3 is 6 is equal to 6. Okay. So if you solve this, 6 plus 6 minus 4.8 divided by 0 0.45, uh, F has a value of 16. Okay. So 13 is C. Water of depth 9 is covered by oil. So water of depth 9 is covered by oil of depth 5. The density of water is this and the density of water is this. Is. What is the total pressure exerted on the base of the measuring cylinder? Okay. We want to find out the pressure here. So it's H rho G plus H rho G, right? So 9 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 9.81 into 1000 plus 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 9.81 into 800 um okay plus 5 into 10 power minus 2 into 9.81 into 800 so that gives us a value of 1275.3 or 1200 pascals that's the best answer 14 sorry 1300 1275 if you round this off to the nearest answer that's 1300 right so D is your best answer, since it's above 50. 15. A rocket is fired upwards. As it accelerates upwards after leaving the launch pad, uh, which forms of energy are changing? So it's accelerating, okay? So kinetic energy is changing. It is gaining height, so gravitational potential energy is changing, okay? And inside the rocket, the fuel is being burnt, right? So chemical energy is also changing. That is providing the origin, right? So it's actually A. A roll of tape of length. Fifty meters requires a constant force of 20 to unwrap it. What is the work done? in unwrapping the whole roll, okay? So work done is equal to force into distance. We need to move a distance of 50 meters in total. 
so that was pretty straightforward 1000 joules right so it's actually d look at 17 a trolley of mass 600 is initial at point p on a slope at a height of 80 meters above ground level as shown it has zero k now the trolley is released from rest and moves along the slope first coming to rest at point q at height h above ground level the total distance pq moved by the trolley along the slope is 1.5 kilometers a constant resistive force of 3 newton opposes the motion of the trolley on the slope. What is height h? So how to do this? We are going to use energy. Okay. So initially our trolley only had GP. At the end, our trolley had some GP. Okay. But you need to understand that it came to rest again. Okay. It came to rest at point Q. So at this point, the kinetic energy is zero again. Initially it was zero, at that point it was also zero. So what actually happened? It gained some GP and it did some work against resistance. So the initial GP, MGH, is actually MG into AT. The final GP is just MGH. And the work done against resistance is distance moved 1500 into force 300. So 600 into 9.1 into AT is equal to 600 into 9.1 into H plus 450000. Okay, so let's solve this. Wait, let me move this here. Okay, so 600 into 9.81 into 80 minus 450000 divided by 600 divided by 9.81 gives us a value of h is equal to 3.55 meters. Okay, so 17 is a. Let's look at 18. An object of weight 15 newtons is pulled along a horizontal surface at constant velocity of 2. The force pulling the object is 12 newtons at 30 to the horizontal. What is the power used to move the object? Okay, so you cannot take the full 12 newton force. You need to take the component 12 cos 30. So we can say that P is equal to FV since it's moving at constant velocity. That's the keyword. So 12 P is equal to FV and 12 cos 30 is the force and the velocity is 2. So if you multiply this 12 cos 30 into 2, you're getting a value of 12 root 3 or 20.8 watts B. So they basically give you the weight to confuse you. You don't need to use it here. So the spring constants of four springs are determined by plotting the four graphs. Okay, we know that F is equal to Kx and K is equal to F by X. So for this one, it's actually... Okay, let's not convert millimeters because all of them are in the same units. This is 10 by 5, which is 2. This is 20 by 4, which is 5. This is 100 by 0.1. That's a lot. 100 by 0.1. That's 1000. Although this is in the SI unit, this is 10 by 0.5. 10 by 0.5, which is 20. So decreasing spring constants. Highest is 3 followed by 4 followed by 2 followed by 1 3 4 2 1 3 4 2 1 19b 20 forces are applied to the ends of a rod so that its length increases the variation with force f of the extension e of the rod is shown the point p is the elastic limit which shaded area represents the work done during the plastic deformation of the rod guys be careful Remember that it's straight energy is always the area under the force extension graph. Could I clarify? So always look at the axis, right? At 20, look, the axis has been inverted. So you cannot actually look at this area. You need to look at this area. Could I clarify? So A and D are already like out of our you know they're not part of our options anymore we need to look at b and c now we need to think about uh, plastic deformation so till p we have elastic deformation after p after we exceed p the work that is done contributes to plastic 
deformation so that's why we should be taking C because only this section this green section that I'm shading this represents elastic deformation okay moving on to 21 Waves. Two identical waves are produced by sources at points P and Q. The waves travel along different paths to reach po uh, point R, as shown. Both waves have a wavelength of 6. The waves are at in phase at point R. What is the phase difference between the waves as they leave points P and Q? Interesting question. So, you guys need to understand that. The waves are in phase at point R. But check this. If you look at the pad difference, what's the pad difference? 100 minus 80 is 20 centimeters, okay? And if you compare 20 centimeters with 6, right? It's not an integer multiple. If you compare 20 with 6, 20 divided by 6 is 10 by 3. It's not an integer multiple. Do you understand? If constructive superposition did take place, it should have been an integer multiple but not only does path difference contribute to the type of superposition phase difference contributes as well do you understand so the path difference might be 10 by 3 but for sure there's a phase difference at the beginning which contributes to this constructive superposition okay like there was a scenario like what if the pad difference was two times lambda and the phase difference was zero that would have been constructive as well but the issue here is we know that it's constructive but the phase difference isn't an integer multiple rather it's 10 by 3. So check this out. How am I gonna solve this? Come on see this. So basically uh, if they take these values, constructive superposition occurs, okay? So, check this. We know that the path difference 20 by 6 is 10 by 3 or 3.33. Where does that fall? It falls in between 3 and 4, okay? So, you have an option to make this constructive superposition in two ways. You can either go to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Both work, okay? Uh, they won't give both in the options, but we are going to find out both. Understood? So, how do we do that? Come on, check this. So, we know that 6 centimeters corresponds to 360 degrees, right? Now, look at this. We know that 20 minus 6 into 3 is actually... 20 minus 18, which is 2 centimeters. So we can say that it's 2 centimeters out of phase. Now, come on. 6 centimeters is 360 degree. 1 centimeter is 360 by 6. So what about 2 centimeters? That's actually 360 by 6 into 2. So 360 by 6 into 2. That's actually 120 degrees out of phase. So if we fix that, constructive superposition will occur. Okay. What is the alternate route I was talking about? Look at this. Why don't we think of it this way? Like, for example, we know that 6 times 3 is 18. We also know that 6 times 2 is 12. Now, our value, where is it at? Our value is at 20. So, in the first one, I was looking at the proximity from this. Okay? It was 2 centimeters above that. But it can also be like this. Sorry, not this. Um, wait. Yeah, six times here we were doing, we were comparing 20 with 18. But we can also compare, because 20 was 2 centimeters above 18. We can also compare this, this 4. 6 into 4 is actually 24. Our value is 4 centimeters short, right? <laughs> so look at this. 6 centimeters, maybe 360 degrees. So what about 4 centimeters? It's 360 by... Uh, 6 into 4, right? 360 by 6 into 4. Th that's 240 degrees. So this was also a possible answer. Do you understand? 
it's just a matter of perspective they won't give both in the question but according to our question over here in the context of this question 120 is better it's actually if you do have a choice if both are present just look at the closest one like compare 18 and 24 which one is closer go for that one okay so that's how we get 120 degrees using this all right important question 22 <laughs> A longitudinal wave traveling from left to right has vibrations parallel to the direction of transfer of energy by the wave. Okay. The wave can be represented on a graph showing the variation with distance of the displacement of the particles from the equilibrium positions at one instant. Which point on the graph is the center of a compression? This is interesting. This is a common question. I've seen it multiple times. Now look at this. In these ones, we have a displacement to the right. This is a longitudinal wave expressed in the form of a transverse wave, but it's longitudinal. So suppose in this section, we have displacement to the right, okay? Displacement to the right. It will gradually increase and at maximum, it will have highest displacement. And then over time, it will become smaller and smaller until it becomes like this, okay? Now, this is displacement to the right. At After this point, like we have displacement to the left. So it's going to be like this. Left, 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 left. Highest left here. Then left, left. It will slowly but surely come down like this. Okay. Now what about this? From this section onwards, again, we have uh, displacement to the right. So oscillations will change direction. Slowly it will keep on increasing until it has highest over here and slowly it will keep on decreasing again again what do we have here like this okay so if you think about it carefully a compression is where air pressure is maximum all the particles are converging to a point right now look at this all the particles where do they converge at a point like c and a are actually totally out of the like options here it's either between b and d but look at b like the arrows are here like this and the arrows are here like this so it's like the particles are converging towards the b so b is in fact our compression and the particles are diverging from d so d is actually a rare fraction okay interesting question moving on to 23 a station wave is formed from two identical sound waves a microphone is placed at a position of maximum loudness it is then moved along the stationary wave from this first position of maximum loudness to its fourth position of maximum loudness okay a point of maximum loudness is basically an antinode so it's placed at one antinode then it's moved from the first one across the second one across the third one to the fourth one now it moves a distance of 12 so Antinode to antinode is actually lambda by 2. Antinode to antinode, lambda by 2. Antinode to antinode, lambda by 2. So from the first to fourth, it's actually 3 lambda by 2. Do you guys understand? 3 lambda by 2 is equal to 12 centimeters. So lambda is actually equal to 8 centimeter or 0 0.08 meters. Now we know that V is equal to F lambda. Speed is 330. 330 is equal to 0 0.08 into F. 330 by 0 0.08 is 4125. Closest answer, A. 23A. Interesting question 24. An ambulance has a siren that emits sound of constant frequency. It is moving directly towards a station observer. Now, why is this important? Why am I saying this is interesting? Because typically, typically in Doppler effect, when you move at constant velocity, if an object mo uh, if a source moves towards an observer, frequency actually increases, and when it recedes or goes away, frequency decreases. But the opposite will happen if you decelerate okay if you accelerate it's fine if you accelerate okay so at constant speed when you approach frequency increases when you recede frequency decreases now when you accelerate the same thing happens it becomes more exaggerated but what happens if you decelerate now that's the issue the ambulance decelerates as it approaches the observer and then accelerates after it has passed the observer how does the frequency of the sound heard by the observer change as the ambulance is approaching and as it mo is moving away from the observer hear me out so when the ambulance is moving towards the observer typically uh 
we know that frequency was supposed to increase but when you decelerate the opposite will happen okay so as it is approaching the observer we thought that frequency is supposed to increase but due to the deceleration frequency will actually decrease okay that's why c and d are wrong next when it's moving away from the observer we're actually accelerating so what happens when something moves away we typically expect frequency to decrease right and since it's accelerating it will decrease at a greater rate so it's actually a so when it's acceleration just think of it the normal way but when it's deceleration just think of it in the opposite manner understood macros in a vacuum travel at speed x and have a wavelength of this what is the speed and possible out of magnitude of x rays check this guys it can't be this because they have the same velocity now what about the wavelength check this out guys gx uv i m r microwaves are over here and x rays are here come on visible light is at 10 to the power minus 7 microwaves are at like 10 to the power minus 3 x rays are like at 10 to the power minus you know minus 3 or minus 2 by the way and x rays are like at minus 10 ish okay so if you look at the difference it can't be 10 to the power minus 4 it has to be 10 to the power minus 8 x rays are much shorter than microwaves okay so 25 is also a 26 the diagram shows part of a station wave on a string x and y points in string the vibrations at x and y 180 degrees out of phase what is the distance between x and y Check this. We are seeing a station wave. Okay. So basically these are anti nodes because in the next after t by four seconds, right? A one fourth of a time period, they will reach maximum amplitude. The figure might become like this, right? So the distance between one anti node to the other is actually lambda by 4 remember sorry lambda by 2 remember that antinode to antinode is lambda by 2 always antinode to node is lambda by 4 but antinode to antinode or node to antinode node to node okay node to node or antinode to antinode is always lambda by 2 so it's going to be half a wave then 27 which wave behavior is shown so we're passing through a slit right and the waves are actually spreading into their geometrical shadow so 27 this is actually a diffraction 28. A teacher sets up the apparatus shown to demonstrate double slit interference, which will increase sp fringe spacing. Look at this. The formula is x is equal to lambda d by a. To increase fringe spacing, x, we can increase d, increase lambda, or decrease the slit width. Okay. According to our question over here, the formula should be x is equal to lambda r. Okay. P has nothing to do with it divided by q. We can either increase r or decrease q so decreasing the distance q that looks good 28 is b moving on to 29 light of a single unknown wavelength and blue light of a single wavelength are both instant normally on a diffraction grading two patterns are produced one for each wavelength the third order maximum for the blue light occurs at the same angle as the second order maximum of the light of unknown wavelength okay d sin theta is equal to n lambda so i'm doing it for blue light now so we're using the same grating okay so d sine theta is equal to it's the third order 3 into blue light 480 okay now for the wavelength of unknown light it's also d because same grating and the angle is the same they fall on the same place occur the same angle d sine theta is equal to um second order so second order of the unknown wavelength okay now we can equate this 2 into lambda is equal to 3 into 480 3 into 480 by 2 gives us a value of 720 nanometers so 29 is actually b 30 what is the electric field strength we do not have this in our syllabus uh, 31 to 40 now 31 is also excluded from our syllabus from 2022 uh, 32 which two units are used to define the column so q is equal to it right so we use current and time those are the quantities so the units are ampere and second 32a let's look at 33 now 
A mobile phone battery is charged by connecting it to a constant potential difference of 5 volts. After a time of 1 hour, the initial current of 0.5 amperes slowly decreases to zero as shown. What is the best estimate of the energy transfer to the battery during the time of 2 hours shown in the graph? Okay. So, energy, guys. We know that energy is we know that voltage is equal to work done by charge and we know that the work done or the energy is actually voltage into charge or q is equal to it so vit so we can actually find out the total charge by finding out the area under the graph right easily so the area under the graph is actually 0.5 into one hour into 3600 seconds and for the triangle it's 1 hour into 3600 seconds into 0.5 into half okay so 0.5 into 3600 into 0.5 that's 2700 now if you think about it this is the total charge that was transferred total charge transferred now if you find want to find out the work done it's actually voltage into charge transferred so 2700 coulombs into the voltage of 5 volts okay so 5 into 2700 gives us an answer of 13500 which can be rounded off to 14000 nearest answer 33c 34 a length of wire is connected to into an electric circuit the current in the wire is measured which change on its own could increase the current in the wire okay so we know that v is equal to ir i is equal to v by r we either increase voltage or decrease resistance and we know that r is equal to rho l by a we want to decrease resistance right so increasing the length of the wire is a no-go increasing the radius of the wire okay if you increase the radius of the wire area is pi r square right if you increase radius area increases Denominator increases, radius decreases, so current will increase. That's why the answer is B. Good. 35. A cell is described as having an electromotive force of 6. What does this mean? So, guys, it means that 6 joules of energy is required per unit charged. 6 joules of energy is required per unit charge to pass it around the whole circuit or through the battery. Could I clarify? So, we're going to look for that. 1 coulomb of charge always dissipates 6 joules of energy. This doesn't make any sense. Not It has nothing to do with the internal resistance. 1 electron gains 6 joules of energy. No, not 1 electron. It's for 1 coulomb of charge, okay? Not 1 electron. Next. There's a potential difference of 6 applied across any external circuit connected to the cell? No. When 1 coulomb of charge passes through the cell, 6 joules of chemical energy is transferred. This is perfect, okay? If in B, this was the wrong part. The diagram shows the network of resistors. Each has a resistance of R. What is the total resistance? Okay, this is R. This section is 1 by R plus 1 by R reciprocal, which is R by 2. And this section is 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R reciprocal, which is R by 3. So these three are in series with each other now. R plus R by 2 plus R by 3. 1 plus 0.5 plus 1 by 3 gives us a value of 11 by 6 R. So I'm going to go with C. 36 is in fact C. Moving on to 37. Three resistors are connected in series with the battery as shown. The battery has negligible internal resistance. Okay. Where is the potential difference across the 180 ohm resistor? This is very simple. Use potential divider. 180 divided by 180 plus 120 plus 150 into 6 will give you the answer. 180 divided by 180 plus 120 plus 150 into 6 gives us an answer of 2.4 volts. 2.4 volts. So 37 is B. 38. A potentiometer circuit is used to determine the unknown electromotive force of a cell. In the circuit shown E is a cell with EMF that is known accurately. QR is a potentiometer wire which has a movable contact S. S is connected to a galvanometer and to cell X. Great. What is not a necessary requirement to determine the EMF of X? The EMF of cell X must be lower than the EMF of cell E. This is a requirement. Because if it wasn't lower, come on, it would never match. 
this one would always be greater. So remember, for this potentiometer meter to work, the EMF below must have a lower value. Because suppose if this is like 10, right? And suppose this is, uh, you know, six. So at, and if this is a hundred centimeter wire, okay? At 60 centimeters, it would match. The internal resistance of cell X must be known. Um, no, no, this isn't a requirement, okay? This is wrong, so this is the correct answer. The length must be determined correctly. The resistance must be proportional to its length, true. So B is wrong. The internal resistance must not be known. A particle of uranium undergoes a series of decays, okay? Uranium-235-92. During the series of decays, two alpha particles and one beta are emitted, okay? Two alpha, so it becomes X-231. 90 then after alpha it becomes y you know minus 4 which is uh, 217 sorry 227 and 88 followed by one beta minus particle so it's going to turn into z one beta minus mass number will remain the same proton number increases by one so 227 89 we are looking for that so my answer is b which particle is a fundamental particle? The answer is electron because it's a lepton. Leptons are fundamental particles. These are not since they are made up of quarks. Okay, so that is all guys. I'm going to link paper one physics up here. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. And after I'm done with um, May, June 2021 variant one, two, I'm going to link that up here. And I'm going to link May, June 2021 variant one, three down here. Okay. See ya.